next question is going to I'm going to ask it on three levels. Um, what what value does the behavioural science bring? One to people analytics, two to HR, and three to the organisation. Sure. So on the um, uh, the first one is uh, individual level, right? I'll get you to oh. prompt me again. People yeah, analytics, yeah. people analytics, HR, and the organisation. Yeah. So for um, people analytics, it just helps you reach accurate conclusions you know come to the best decisions you know rather than erroneous conclusions and uh results that don't make sense that's that's what it uh that's what it essentially does and uh it, it can do that really really well if you start from you know defining your research, research question do a little bit of a literature review google scholar is the other Thing that people yeah. might not use but google scholar is really good i mean um a lot of that stuff is uh open access now so it's really powerful and it can help you just frame the sort of analysis that you're going to do you know the the even some of the storytelling and influencing but the 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 writers are doing that in their papers as well because they have to convince the readers and the reviewers so that's a really good um, resource to help you get to the right conclusions. And um, for HR analytics, uh, what behavioral science? Yeah, I think that uh, the the analytics without the behavior is not really HR analytics. I think that it's a pretty important uh, component. And yeah. for uh, HR analytics, I think it can just help elevate the discipline. You know, it can elevate the discipline if you get um, the right kind of messaging coming out. You can get, I don't know what you're seeing around the um, where the director of analytics is reporting these days. I think at the time it was mostly into the, uh, the CHRO, um, but it, I think it can help that they get, it can help them to report into the uh, CEO uh, more often. So I think that it can elevate the discipline and just uh, make it uh, have more of a serious impact. And the same, <laughs> I don't want to go this far, but look how seriously we took all of the scientists in COVID. I think that if we kind of really major on the behavioral science and HR analytics, it will just kind of elevate the messaging that, that we have there. And um, on an organizational level, yeah, it can certainly help drive organizational performance. Yeah. There is uh, there is no doubt that if you set that up right, you can show uh, empirically, statistically, that these uh, approaches, when you implement them well, um, lead to uh, greater organizational effectiveness. And for that, David, I think that what you really want to uh, be showing is causal inference. So I think that I've kind of, I'm, uh, talking to a lot of people about whether we can really uh, make causal claims on the basis of our HR analytics analyses. And I think for a lot of the analyses we do, you can't, but yeah. we really need to change that. There is a massive demand for it. That's what the business needs. But I think that that is a skill shortage area as well, this causal inference area. So that's what I would be hoping to see in the coming kind of five years, three to five years from uh, HR analytics. In this series, we will be speaking to a range of senior leaders who are pushing a data-driven and digital HR agenda. Make sure that you subscribe by your podcast app of choice and also via our YouTube channel for free and regular interviews with the digital HR leaders of the future.